delicious last course. Oh, the delicious last course. One can eat their fill and still stay until the delicious last course. It's a delicious last course. Oh, that delicious last course. It's on cakes and pies, it doesn't go so much. So some might call me a Cuphead enthusiast, a Cuphead connoisseur even, and I've been playing a lot of it recently since the long-awaited DLC has finally come out. Now, while I've played Cuphead since the game came out in August 2017, I've never really tried to beat the game on Expert Mode. I just thought it wouldn't be good enough, since when I first tried to complete the game on Expert Mode back in 2017, Ruby and Croaks of all bosses was giving me a bit more trouble than I would like to admit. Dude, are you- I wanna kill myself, man. What the- So, I'm playing Cuphead a couple of days ago, and took a small break to scroll through YouTube on my phone. I saw a post-DLC Cuphead boss tier list, and was intrigued on what someone thought the hardest bosses were. Well, this was the worst tier list I've ever seen. This list was so bad that it literally made me want to complete the game on expert mode, just to prove to myself that this YouTuber's list was a crime to humanity. So that's exactly what I did. I completed every single boss on expert mode. Now, simply beating these bosses on expert wasn't enough for me, so I decided to challenge myself even more. I had to beat every single boss on expert mode and get an S rank before I could move on to the next boss. Now, that's already pretty difficult as it is, but do I enjoy fun? Hell no! So I decided that the only charm I'm allowed to use is heart ring. It gives you one health on your first, third, and sixth parry of the fight, so if you're good enough, you can stack up a ton of health and just tank hits as you stick your snapping fingers right up their a- Heart Ring is probably one of, if not the best charm in the game in my opinion, since it makes the HP requirement for the S rank much easier and encourages you to get parries, which you already need to do, so I've made myself use only this charm for all the bosses. I also wanted to show how good Heart Ring is, because if you have it, it makes many of these bosses much easier, thus altering their ranking. Heart Ring would already be affecting tier lists even if you didn't use it, so I went ahead and only used it instead, which I find quite funny. Now, some may ask why I decided to also ban Miss Chalice. Well, it's because she makes a lot of these bosses really easy and a bit too different from the normal Cuphead experience. So let me explain. Miss Chalice makes most of these boss fights straight up free with her ability to double jump to higher platforms with ease, parry with her dash, which is actually easier to do for a lot of the boss fights, and her dodge roll, which grants her invincibility frames so she can roll as much as she wants through attacks. And, and not to mention the fucking extra health. With all of this together, she makes a lot of the harder bosses a joke, really, so I decided to stick with just using my boy Mugman. I also wanted to base the tier list on a more default experience of the game, since that's how the majority of people would be playing anyways, and it makes it more challenging that way. So now that I have completed these challenges I put on myself and beat every boss on Expert with an S rank, I wanted to make a tier list video myself! But before we get into this tier list, I just wanted to say that this is the tier list based on my opinion and my performance on each boss, so I find a lot of what most people consider the hard bosses as pretty easy and vice versa, so just keep that in mind while we go through this tier list. Also just to make clear, this tier list is based on the difficulty of beating each boss on expert mode and getting an S rank, so a lot of rankings can change due to the increased difficulty on expert mode. I'll mention for some bosses what the ranking would be if not trying to get an S rank, since without it, the bosses are significantly easier. One last thing, the spot in which each King Dice mini boss resides will influence the rankings slightly. What I mean is that you might have less health if you were to land on the 9 instead of the 4, so you might have less health going into fight Mr. Chimes than Pippin Dot. You also do need to survive with enough health and time in order to S rank King Dice himself, so because of these reasons, some placements of the mini bosses might not be in the exact same place you would think, but also keep in mind that these bosses are still very easy by themselves and are still very low on the tier list regardless, if that gives any of you a peace of mind. I will also not be ranking the King's Gauntlet or the Secret Angel and Demon boss fight since they do not have an expert mode. With that all said, let's finally get into this tier list. <laughs> Light work, baby, let's go! So by far the easiest boss under these restrictions is Goopy the Ground. This is the first boss you fight, and it's for good reason. The attacks are really easy to react to, his first and second stage are exactly the same, except for him getting bigger, and he practically gives you the three parries you need for free. And his last stage is easy to dodge. This is absolutely no challenge here, and for that reason, he's the lowest on the list. So the next one up on the list is Root Pack. I mean, really all you have to do is... Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Uh, that's pretty much it, so not much more to say here. Now, funny enough, I actually think that Chip's bed again is slightly harder than the root pack. Now, with Smoke Bomb, definitely the easiest boss, but without Smoke Bomb, you have to be pretty precise with your jumps. It gives you some weird holes that you have to maneuver yourself into, and sometimes you just get cucked over by the next chips flying over when you're trying to dodge the first ones. Of course, it's still easy, but you actually need to pay attention to beat Chips Bed again, so for that reason, I put him just a little bit higher on the list than normal. They're still about the same level. Pierlota is honestly the easiest boss, even before Chips Bed again if you have Smoke Bomb. It's only easier because you can of course dash through everything, but you have the liberty of having more attacks be effective against her. With Chips Bed again, you either use cr Chaser slash Crack Shot, or you can just use a normal, the normal shot, but you need to stand at like some weird angle to actually hit those shots. While with Pirouetta, you can use virtually any shot and it would be good against her. Now, the reason she's slightly above Chips Bed again in this case is because without Smoke Bomb, you actually have to put a little bit more work into not getting hit and you gotta stay on your toes. Remember, I need the S rank King dice and taking unnecessary hits is just annoying and bad. Since so you have to work slightly more to not get hit and she's in the seventh spot and not the second spot like Chips, I think she's just above Chips Bed again in difficulty. I feel like I'm gonna get some backlash behind this opinion, but the Tipsy Troop are really not that hard at all once you know how they work. There's more to react to overall, I guess, but it's pretty easy to deal with. The, all of the Wine Glass throws is just basically nothing. It's pretty much a free kill. The Whiskey Glass attack is really easy to jump over. It's easy to see when it's coming. And Whiskey Bottle is not hard to dodge at all, and you have plenty of room to work with to react to all of these attacks. So overall, it's pretty easy to beat. I know a lot of people get flustered at all of the attacks, uh, but just don't. <laughs> it's really not that hard to dodge. It's pretty easy, I would say. So if you take hits on this boss, you just should just restart, honestly. But yeah, I think it deserves to be in this spot. Now, Fear Lap is not very hard in normal mode, but in expert mode, his attacks are a lot faster and there's more to react to, like the ghost that comes up from the bottom of the stage every once in a while. Also, the horseshoes just move a lot faster, and he throws another gift while you're trying to dodge the other horseshoes, while the bottom of the stage is blocked off by the riders, and the foreground blocks him your vision. It's also based on RNG, really, where the presents land in the air, so sometimes they land so far back you don't have to do anything, and sometimes they land right in your face. It just depends on your luck, so because of the unpredictability and hindrances the boss fight tries to give you, I think it only slightly is above Tipsy Troop. Now, Mr. Wheezy is not a hard boss to beat or hit, but he's a bit annoying to fight and it's slightly difficult to constantly dodge his attacks. If Smoke Bomb was in use, it would definitely be easier, but without it, sometimes the cigarettes that fly up in the middle of the stage can cause you to take a hit if in the wrong place at the wrong time. Mr. Wheezy shoots a lot more fireballs at you on expert mode that move in a very weird pattern and sometimes just barely hit your toes, thus taking an unnecessary hit. It also feels like it takes forever to kill him, especially with Chaser or Crack Shot. It just depends on what shots you bring in to defeat the King Dice fight, honestly. I personally brought Spread and Crack Shot or Chaser most of the time because it was effective against most of the bosses. You also have very little room to move around and work with, so it makes it harder to constantly dodge the fireballs without taking a hit. Not a hard boss per se, but it definitely takes some maneuvers and attention to beat. For those reasons, I think he's slightly above Fear Lab. Hopus Pocus is deceitfully hard on Expert Mode and without Smoke Bomb. Since you can't just dodge through a Skull Attack with Smoke Bomb, you have to actually dodge it correctly by dodging through the very small hole that is completely random where it will be. Sometimes you get an easy spot, sometimes you get the weirdest angle you have to go through. It just depends on where the hole is located, honestly. Either way, he basically spams this attack on you with no rests. His parry attack is not hard, but the skulls in constant dodging left me getting hit a lot on this boss. If I didn't have the heart ring equipped and he was in the higher spot in the King Dice boss area, he would be the hardest boss by far since taking a single damage could make you need to restart the boss fight if you didn't get any hearts from rolling a spot with a heart. For these reasons, I think he's one of the hardest mini bosses. Mr. Chimes is just annoying and time consuming to go against. I definitely like the idea of him, but to fight him just kind of sucks. You have to memorize or just guess pairs of cards while he's moving around the whole screen, and the more you fail at matching pairs of cards, the faster he becomes and the more aggressive he becomes. Mr. Chimes is essentially a run ender if you get him because of how time consuming he is to fight, and you need the time bonus in order to get the S rank, so he's simply pretty high because of this. Now, I don't know why, but Pippin Dot was the hardest King Dice boss to go against on Expert Mode. It's very awkward to shoot them without a homing attack while constantly dodging the spikes, while half the stage is taken up by this stupid spike wall, while they shoot D20s at you, while this weird bird domino thing tries to get you. The only attack that's really viable and consistent to use against Pippin Dot are homing attacks, and their decreased DPS make this boss fight last forever. 
Pippin Dot give you some stuff to parry every once in a while, so you can heal a little bit with Heart Ring, but this boss just sucks to go against, and if you take two hits or more, with or without Heart Ring, it's basically a run ender. These are the reasons why I think this is the hardest boss to get past and still be able to S-Rank King Dice. Now these are all the bosses for this tier. Remember, these are all bosses that are very easy to beat by themselves. I know there are some controversial picks here and there, but let me know what you think. With that, let's get on to the next tier. Dude, this boss was so easy. So these bosses pose some sort of challenge in some way, but are still generally easy to beat. The bosses higher on the tier list pose more and more challenges as they get closer to the next tier, but are still generally easy to beat. So with that, here we go. Phantom Express. Now, some people think Phantom Express is higher on the difficulty scale than normal, but in reality, it's only the last phase that could be even a little bit tricky. The first phase, you just use roundabout and jump and shoot. The second phase takes a bit more work, but still easy, and even if you do get caught with your pants down, you can just stand between the two hands and not take any damage, which I'm going to assume some of you didn't know, but it's still pretty easy to deal with the conductor. The lollipop ghouls are also pretty easy to deal- Okay, everything is easy to deal with, I think you get the point. <laughs> The ghosts can be a nuisance, but they just give you free parries, if anything. If it needs to be said, this boss fight has the most parries you'll see in the entire game, so you get easy heart ring value and easy super. The last phase is a bit tricky, but at that point, you should have max HP, so you can take hits until you win. Phantom Express is the boss you play when you just want to absolutely body a boss, but I have to work a little bit for it. That's it. King Dice by himself would have been in the previous tier a while ago, but for including needing to beat a minimum of three bosses and then him, I think he deserves to be here on the tier list. Since you can essentially just pick the three bosses you want to fight if you learn how to hit the dice correctly, you can just go against Chips Bedigan, Fearlap, and Pureletta, and then just fight King Dice himself. Definitely not the easiest boss in the game, but really not hard at all once you know what you're doing. Cagony Carnation is a boss some people consider higher on the difficulty scale to S, but I couldn't disagree more. Especially using this chalice, this boss fight is borderline light work, baby, let's go! But it's a bit harder using Cuphead and Mugman. Patience is key with this boss. You don't need to make any risky maneuvers to beat this boss, so just take your time and get to his last phase as soon as possible. You can just parry his little flowers in the last phase and get your parries and health back to get the S rank. And the C's are really not as hard to deal with than people lead it on to be, even though they can be annoying again the way. Everything else is easy to deal with, so I think Cagney being here makes sense. Poses some challenges, but overall, not hard to S rank. Sally's stage play is also a pathetically easy boss. Basically nothing changes from normal mode to expert mode. The only hard part is getting all the parries for the S rank, since you have to get them all through the first and last phase, and the meter doesn't count. You can actually make this even easier by skipping the first phase entirely, by just using Miss Chalice and doing the secret phase. I don't have any footage of that, so sadly I can't show you, but anyways, let's just move on, this boss is easy. Now I hear way too many people say Captain Brinybeard is hard like a YouTuber I know. <coughs> <clears throat> but this is really by far one of the easiest bosses in the game. He basically throws parries out like it's spare change, so healing and getting your parries is effortless, and everything else is simple to deal with. I would say the sea dogs and the barrel are our biggest nuisance in the entire fight, but even those are simple to deal with. The last phase is only tricky because of the constant fireballs the boat spits out, and you can just duck under the laser. Now, I know what some people are thinking, well, what about the barrel when it comes down while you're ducking under the laser? Well, folks, I think I'm about to blow your mind, because this will solve all of your problems. Are you serious right now, bro? My life, bro. I have one more bubble to pop, and I can't even pop the bubble, bro. Yes, you can dash while ducking under the laser. So, I rest my case. I only moved Captain Brandybeard this high because of all the bosses below him are basically the same difficulty as him, but there's more to look at and deal with, so I bumped him up a little bit more than usual based on some community opinion as well. Okay, this is uh, editing me here. Uh, so apparently I figured it out that if you were to duck on the last phase right around here on the dock, none of the fireballs hit you at all. So uh, that makes this boss even easier than it already was. So that's a neat trick for you guys that have a lot of trouble on this, especially on the last phase. Because I know a lot of people get tripped up on the fireballs like I did like when I first played this game. But still, rest my case, he's a very easy boss. Ruby and Croaks are really not hard at all once you know how their moves work. It's really about getting all the parries in the first phase of the fight, in which the pattern is weird until you know what it is. Typically, if the bottom fist is pink, then the top is going to be pink, and vice versa. And if the middle fist is pink, the middle one is going to be pink again. This makes parrying these very easy and predictable, and the flies are easy to kill, so there's no problem there. The second phase is also super easy, so it's the last phase that usually gets people, but even this is pretty easy too once you understand how it works. 
Just some tips for everyone, keep your back towards the leftmost side of the screen for the bull, because it makes it as simple as jumping up when the fire comes from the bottom, and moving a bit off the platform when the fire comes from the top. You can also apply this principle to the snake. Honestly, you don't even need to do this, but this could make it easier for some of you that have trouble on this. Realistically, you shouldn't even be taking any hits on these first two phases, so you can definitely tank hits here if you need. If anything, I think the coins are the most annoying part of this fight. Not much else to say, not hard once you understand each phase's quirks. Warner Worman posts some challenge in his second phase, but other than that, he dies pretty fast and is straightforward to fight. The parries are not very hard, and if you use Energy Beam on his last phase while all the Ghost Mice are out, it makes that phase a breeze, but that does mean you need to get all your parries during the first phase. The Bottle Caps in second phase are the only real difficult part about this fight, so it might take some time for some people to consistently dodge the Bottle Caps and Werner moving up and down but you get the hang of it quite quickly. Still not a problem, but I had a somewhat harder time S-ranking Werner Worman than the other bosses, so him being here fits him well. Now these are all the bosses for this tier. This tier is probably the hardest to rank just solely on all these bosses being really easy to S-rank by having to rate them on the difficulty. So a lot of these bosses can be interchanged, so don't get too mad if they're not in exactly the same place that you think they should be. So with that, let's move on to the next tier. That was easier than I thought it would be. The Howling Aces gave me a bit of trouble in the last phase, but other than that, this boss is not terribly difficult as well. I was debating on moving this to the previous tier, but I decided to keep it as the first one in this tier. The first phase has the Bulldog throw many parry attacks and easy to dodge projectiles, so this phase is a breeze. The second phase with the Yankee Yippers is also another very easy phase with even more pair projectiles to get you even more health with Heart Ring or Super Meter. And the last phase with the Chinook Pilot Shaluki is not very difficult. The laser section of the phase is easy to dodge, but the second part where your screen flips is still a very weird mechanic that causes me to take some hits or not do as much damage as I'd hoped. Also the last phase is decently long, so I always found myself barely missing the time requirement for an S rank. I think they pose a bit more challenge than the previous bosses listed, but are not hard to get an S rank on, let alone beat on expert. So the bottom of this tier seems fitting for me. Next up is Moonshine Mob. I honestly find the Moonshine Mob to not be terribly difficult to beat on expert or get an S rank on, especially compared to other bosses. The first phase is actually quite easy once you get used to all the different attacks, and the second phase is not terribly difficult either, with or without Smoke Bomb. It's the last phase that really becomes the run ender here for me. The Antiator takes a long time to kill, and the phase is a bit hard to pass without taking a hit or two for me. I'll still typically make it to the end of the fight with 3 HP still, but I either got 2 out of 3 parries or went slightly over the time requirement, so that's what made this boss take a bit more time to S rank than normal. But when it comes to street difficulty, Moonshine Mob is not very difficult to beat. With everything considered, I think this tier is a fair place. Now this is definitely a hot take, but Rumor Honeybottoms is not as hard as people later on to be. Her parries are not very difficult, her phasers are not generally hard, and it's easy to get the time requirement. I usually got all the parries within the first phase, since it's really the only time you can get all your parries. I mean, let's be honest, we don't want to parry the little pink triangles that the big pink triangle shoots. Plus, parrying the big triangle or the pink sphere that follows you during the second phase don't count towards your parries to S rank, but they do count towards heart ring, so getting health on your Rumor is pretty easy. It's definitely the platforming and the, well, lack of, that definitely get people. I'll admit, it's a bit tricky to constantly platform up and get past the humongous gaps there sometimes are, but that's the only thing that really gets in the way of making this a reasonably easy boss. I bumped it up a bit more in this tier than I originally would, because I know people would find this hard simply to be on expert and not even S rank. Now, Bebby the Clown is definitely a hard boss to go against when you first play Cuphead, but after you know how he works, he becomes considerably easier to beat, even on expert. Now, the problem I kind of had was getting the parries funny enough, while also getting the time bonus. The first phase isn't a very reliable source of parries, since usually I shot the pink ducks down by accident, or shot them to not take a hit. In his second phase, I tend to accidentally shoot the pink balloon dogs as well, while I'm trying to do damage to Beppy, so I was missing some of my parries. In his third phase, the roller coaster sometimes cucks you over from getting the parries on the horseshoes. This is a bit exaggerated, but the parries are just a bit harder to get than some other bosses like Ribby or Brownie Beard. When you take your time to get the parries, I tend to just barely miss the time bonus since he has four phases. Overall though, Beppy is not entirely as hard as people lead him on to be. It took me around 6 to 10 minutes to S rank the first time due to me taking stupid hits, and playing him again is even easier. I personally don't think Beppy is that hard to S rank, so him being here on the tier list makes sense. Jimmy the Greek took a bit of time to get an S rank, mainly because there are so many phases. Jimmy has 5 phases that you need to get past, and it's just a time consuming process to get through all of these phases, so sometimes I miss the time requirement. Also, to get through all these phases and take minimal hits with the added expert difficulty was a bit harder than it should have been. If I had to say, it took me maybe 15 minutes to S rank because I kept on taking stupid hits and was learning how to effectively beat each phase since it's been a while since I've gone against Jimmy. With that, Jimmy was definitely the easiest airplane boss, but still posed some challenge, so I think Jimmy deserves this spot here.
Kyle and Maria is a bit tough to rank because depending on your luck, it's either not too hard or a bit challenging in my opinion. In general, the airplane bosses are harder than on the ground bosses because with airplane levels, the game just tends to throw a ton of stuff at you, so not taking hits is difficult. With that, Kyle and Maria definitely throws many attacks at you, but the first phase is really the only phase that gives you a problem. It depends on what attack she does, because for me, if she had summoned the pufferfish and then the ghost pirates, it is pretty difficult to maneuver around all of that, especially since the pattern in which the pufferfish come up is different in expert than regular. The turtle is honestly such a big nuisance and is so annoying. I hear people say this is no problem, but man does it get in the way of some attacks. The second phase with the eels is honestly not that bad, especially considering some other bosses in my opinion. You usually have enough time to react to the bullets the eels shoot. You also have the added perk of being able to kill them as well. Also, being right above Calamaria's head with bombs is a good spot to be when she's in cooldown between her eel attacks and the Medusa petrification. The last phase is a bit tricky to get through, but that's pretty much it. I still think this is a somewhat challenging boss, so I think it deserves to be here on the list. Glumstone the Giant definitely amps up in difficulty from regular to expert. The gnomes constantly coming after you in both the first and second phase definitely were the majority reason why I had to restart the fight constantly, but honestly, after that, he's not that hard. It takes some time to get used to the gnomes and how to approach each of Glumstone's attacks, but after that, it becomes not too difficult to beat him on expert. S ranking him, on the other hand, is a bit harder for sure, but he gives you tons of parries, so you get mega heart ring value, and his last phase is a breeze. So, again, it's just the first two phases that you gotta get past with at least 3 HP. I also never had trouble with the time requirement, so overall, Glumstone is not terribly difficult, even though it might take some time to get used to, but after that, he drops significantly in difficulty. Baroness Von Bonbon was a tedious boss to S-rank for me. You have to go through three randomized mini-bosses with very little opportunities to get parries. Usually the ping jellybean would come right as the boss was in the way, and let's be honest, you're not getting the parry from Baroness's shotgun shot. The menthol that comes out of the Whippet Cream Pup, the castle, doesn't count for parries towards an S-rank, but can get you the parries to heal with heart rank. So while the parries are harder to get than other bosses, there's also the problem with increased difficulty of the mini-bosses. Now, some like Lord Godpacker, Sir Waffington III, and Sergeant Gumbo Gumbo are bosses I would usually never take a hit on, but Colonel Von Pop and Musky Chernikov are so annoying to fight, so getting them really sucks. Luckily, I realized after some time that Colonel Von Pop has this sort of figure 8 pattern that he travels inconsistently after way too long, so it became easier to predict where he would be. Overall, getting unlucky with the boss selection and getting the parries and HP bonus to get the S rank made this more difficult than normal. Took me around, I think, 20 to 25 minutes to S rank, so the longest so far on the tier list. For these reasons, I rate Baroness Von Bonbon this high up in the tier list. Now, I know I'm about to make some of you mad. If I had to rank Grim Matchstick solely based on my opinion and my experience, he would be in the low part of Not Too Hard. I personally think Grim Matchstick is extremely overrated when it comes to difficulty, because once you understand how to play Cuphead and beat the game, Grim Matchstick is easy as pie. Now, to simply beat him on Expert is a breeze and would be in the Didn't Break a Sweat tier, but because I need to get an S rank and I count on a bit of community opinion, I try to be fair and I rank Grim in this part of the tier list. The parries are by far the hardest part about S ranking Grim Matchstick, because the only time he throws parryable attacks is during his first phase, and depending on how fast you get past his first phase, you're not even guaranteed to get three parries. The platforming is manageable and his attacks are not very difficult to dodge in his first phase. The second phase is a breeze if you understand what jumping is, so it's the last phase that definitely sucks. He shoots the fireball a lot more frequently, which were already annoying regular mode, but that's the only challenging part about this last phase. I'll just use the invincibility super art during this phase so I can focus on pure damage for at least a few seconds, so it made this phase just a bit easier. Overall, I don't think Grim Magic is a hard boss at all, so much so that I beat him my first try right after I got an S rank on Vepi. I actually beat him so fast that I had the results board of the Beppy fight in the 3 minute video clip I captured of beating Grim Matchstick. Well, you know, that was actually not as hard as I thought it was going to be. Okay, I think the last boss is the dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dragon these nuts! Okay, we keep crack shot and then we change to lobber. Super, let's probably just stick with invincibility, yeah. Charm, we're good. Okay, let's go! Wait, I think I'm getting really close. Am I gonna beat him? First try? Oh my god, I beat him first try? <laughs> what? Dude, that was so easy. I decided to fight Grim a couple more times and get an S-Rank, and I still did it with ease. So I can S-Rank Grim at least once every three tries, I would say. Even with all of that, I know that a lot of people consider Grim Magic as decently hard, even people with experience, so I decided to heavily amp up the ranking of Grim for that reason solely. Just know again that if I ranked it without community influence, it would be either at the bottom of the Not Too Hard tier, or at the top of the Didn't Break a Sweat tier. That's just my opinion. 
Now that was harder than I thought it would be. Now the bosses in this tier are either bosses I personally had trouble getting an S rank on, or provide enough obstacles and challenges that I think they deserve to be here. A boss generally considered difficult, but I don't find quite as difficult, is the Devil. Now, the Devil himself on Expert is not too hard to beat, it's more about having 3 HP at the end to get the S rank. Now, I have a lot of experience against the Devil, and I've beaten him on Expert many times before I started this challenge, so I'm definitely biased here. But even with that, I still got an S rank on my first try. I played him multiple times after that on Expert just to get more of an opinion, and I still don't think the Devil is that hard. What sometimes happened though is I would always take stupid hits during the first phase with the things he summons, and the last phase with the tears, with the last phase really getting me most of the times. So with that added challenge, community opinion, and trying to be unbiased with my experience, I think the devil being here is a fair enough place to put him. Definitely a boss that takes time to S rank, but mainly because of the HP requirement. If you just use heart ring, it makes S rank of this boss not terribly difficult, but still challenging. Esther Winchester is definitely a boss that deserves to be here, with or without community opinion. But before I get into it, I just want to say this is definitely one of my favorite bosses in the game. She's just so unique, and man, her music has got to be some of the best in the game. I mean, just listen to this. Yo, yo, yo! Ah! Anyways, Esther has a lot going on during her phases that really discombobulate you and took me a good amount of time to get used to, but you can definitely learn her gimmicks and how to approach each phase. Her parries are on the easier side and plentiful to get, so that's not a problem here. It's mainly retaining the 3 HP until the end that makes this boss hard. A lot of the problem is just figuring out how to go around getting the S rank and not as much as how to beat the boss herself, so Esther is surely in this tier and I think she deserves to be in this spot of the tier list. Hildeberg was a pain to S rank, surprisingly. Like I've mentioned before, the plane levels I believe are definitely harder than normal bosses. The problem I had is that, with Hildeberg, it feels like the game only gives you parries when the boss doesn't attack, so you're always trying to dodge everything while also getting the parry. For example, when you enter the second phase, Hildeberg always sends in the Gemini Twins, and right when she sends her vortex and it starts shooting bolts around, a parry always f appears! This kept on happening to me for whatever reason, and I kept on getting 2 out of 3 parries. Anyways, once you get used to the phases, they're not hard to deal with, but her moon phase always got me, whether I couldn't get any parries on the pink stars, or just taking stupid hits. I feel like Hildeberg is still a bit too high on this tier list, even for me, but I genuinely had way more difficulty S ranking this boss than any other bosses on this tier list so far, so I just kept her here. This is definitely my most controversial tier rank placement, but I wanted to spark a debate, so here she goes. Dr. Call's robot was so f***ing annoying to S rank, man. Now, he's generally one of the harder bosses to beat in this game, both on normal and expert, but to S rank Dr. Call's robot? It took a long time to S rank, and as some of you might have already guessed, it was because of the HP requirement. Both his first and second phase do take some time to get used to and fight well consistently, mainly because of these damn stupid bombs that have a big explosion radius that feels like it lasts forever, so I would always run into the explosion and take a hit. Now what makes this such a hard boss to S rank for me was his last phase. It lasts so long and there is so much to dodge and pay attention to, all while the foreground blocks some of your vision. I just could not get past this phase with 3 HP or sometimes even the time bonus. This boss was very annoying to S rank and he well deserves to be at least this high in the tier list. I would say however that this is a boss you can definitely learn to beat easily once you know some tricks and take your time. While finishing up editing this video, I stumbled across a video by Justo All Day on how to efficiently S rank Kyle's robot, and oh boy did I need this when I was attempting to S rank this. Still a hard boss, but I would highly recommend watching this video before attempting to S rank this boss, since it could really help make this boss easier to deal with. Either way, I still do think that this is one of the hardest bosses to consistently S rank, so with everything considered, I think this spot in the tier list is fair. Now that's it for this tier. These are bosses I would consider tougher on the scale to beat, where you have to learn their moves, get in good habits before you can actually get the S rank, let alone do it consistently. So with that, let's move on to the last tier. There are things everywhere, what the fuck? Oh my god. Wally Warbles was one of the hardest to just beat on Expert. 
in this first phase, you are not safe from anything. I just could not deal with the eggs. There are definitely some spots that you are generally safe from splitting eggshells, but it just feels like you have no room. His second phase is super easy, so no problem there. Now, the baby Willy Warbles was deceitfully hard to get past without taking any hits. He just takes forever to kill since the shells that spin around him are fast and unpredictable and block your bullets, so you basically have to use bombs to do splash damage to hit him while he's fully surrounded, and that means getting in real close. Like seriously though, these move in such a weird way, I just could not get past this without taking a hit most of the time. Luckily, every shot Willy shoots from his ray gun is parryable, so the parry requirement was no problem and getting health from heart ring was generally easy, but I took so many hits that I would have to restart anyways. His last phase also feels like it lasts forever, and I swear this boss just does not know what personal space is, man, because you have none of it. There's just a lot of things to be dodging here, and I really do believe maneuvering in a plane is a bit harder than flat ground, so I ended up taking a one hit that makes me have to restart the boss. This was just a pain to S rank, it took maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half to S rank, and that has been the longest so far it's taken just to S rank a boss. Oh my god, how many shots did this guy take? Just die! Oh my, oh my god, please. Please, no. This has been my best run yet. Please. Just die! How you- Oh my god, thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god, that was- That was like, what, an hour, I think? Like, I think so. Oh, uh- What the fu- Now, somehow, Mortimer Freeze gave me even more trouble. I honestly could not get all the parries, even though technically all phases can give you something to parry. The first phase, it's based on RNG whether he throws a parryable card or not, so it's not a reliable source of parries, especially since you will probably not get the time requirement if you take your time. In the last phase, the parries are, in my opinion, not easy to get since you usually need to go far from the platforms to get the parry, and usually you'll just get hit by the other projectiles that are coming at you. The second phase is the biggest pain in the ass I've ever had to deal with in a boss fight so far. The worst part of the second phase are the ice cubes by far, especially combined with the other attacks the snowman does. Every single time he switched out of the fridge, he would do another attack and the damn ice cubes would get in the way and I would take a hit. It was basically the same problem, but with popsicle bats. These would just always get in the way and I would take a hit, or I would shoot them on accident, so I also couldn't get many parries from the second phase. So with all of this, I either couldn't get the parries to S rank, or I would just take a ton of hits and have to restart. This took me forever to S rank, and I only got the S rank because I got lucky with the parries. Mortimer Freeze, for me, was the hardest boss to beat on Expert, so he deserves to be at least here on the tier list. I fear no man, but that thing... It scares me. No, I, I, ain't, I ain't talking about that freak, all right? He's not here, is he? How do we get this fucking thing off? One shudders to imagine what inhuman thoughts lie behind that mask. What dreams of chronic can sustain cruelty. Holy f***ing piece of sh This was by far one of the hardest bosses just to consistently S rank in this game. If Wally Warbles didn't know what personal space was, then this boss gave me claustrophobia. There is literally no place you can stand for more than one second until you will get hit by something. It doesn't matter what it is on the map. The advantage Saltbeaker gets for being one of the hardest bosses in this game is that he's newer to the game. At least with the other bosses, I had some time to prepare, and I generally knew what I was going in for, even though some of the bosses I haven't played in so long. But I had no idea what to expect from Chef Saltbaker. I thought they were just going to add little things here and there, but no, I think they added just a little bit more than you think across the whole boss fight. Funny enough, I don't even think Saltbaker is the hardest boss to beat on Expert, and potentially Mortimer Freeze or Wally Warbles are harder to beat on Expert. But S ranking Salt Baker is a whole different experience than just beating him. The only viable way to really beat Salt Baker is to use at least one homing attack, if not two. You just can't hit him at all or get past his first phase without one or else you risk the time bonus or take even more damage than usual. 
His second phase is quite tricky to maneuver around because Studio MDHR decided that keeping the two fireballs from the first phase instead of just one was a good idea. You are constantly at risk of taking a hit, especially if multiple attacks start coming after you. This phase also feels like it lasts way too long, and at this point you start making stupid mistakes, costing you the run. His third phase is a bit awkward with its hitbox and the two saws on the floor are a nuisance, but overall this phase is nothing compared to the previous two. His last phase is also quite awkward to maneuver and jump around with because a lot of the times the platforms are very far from each other. The heart is also much faster and thus gets in the way of the platforms all the time, so not taking a hit is pretty hard. This phase also suffers from the attacks not hitting all the time unless you specifically bring Chaser for this phase which I did most of the time. All of this combined made this boss one of the hardest to be on Expert and also S-Rank. Again, I can't imagine people being able to consistently S-Rank this boss like nothing, at least without Heart Ring. Now, to be real here, these last three bosses could be interchanged since I generally had to take at least more than one hour to S-Rank these bosses just once, and Solid Picker was quite tough to decide on. But I do think with everything I stated before, it qualifies enough to be the hardest boss to S-Rank in this game. Well, that seems to be it. These are all the bosses ranked from easiest to S rank to hardest. I hope you enjoyed the video. Wait, what's going on? No, it couldn't be, right? <laughs> no, no way. <sighs>
I just wanted to say thank you to all who stuck to the end of the video. This is my first time ever making and editing a video, and oh boy this took me a while to finish. This channel is mainly to release any music I produce or help produce, but I decided I want to make a Cuphead tier list since it's one of my favorite games and I got the inspiration and energy to do it because of the DLC that came out recently. I just wanted to make this for fun and wanted to assure everyone so don't take everything I said too seriously. But while you're here, I would appreciate it if you would check out my music. Anything I release should be out everywhere, but you'll find the most content I release on my YouTube. I would also appreciate if you had subscribed and took a listen to some of my newer tracks. I've only been making music for just about two years, and half those years I was working on a free version of a music program, so I'm definitely improving, and any criticism or thoughts would be appreciated. My main outlets for my more professional music would be SoundCloud and Spotify, since I can't be looking out on all platforms. Hell, my music is even on TikTok! But again, thanks everyone for watching, and I hope to see you here for more music releases.